Donald Trump walks into a gun store and is asked a very difficult question, but watch how he answers it. I can only imagine how Joe Biden would have answered this question. Uh, we'll take care of it. That's fantastic. Let's go. Let me get Let's in go, the man. middle here someplace. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotta go front and center, baby. I love it. Come on. Well, I was very proud to receive the endorsement from these people. These are the most powerful people in the great state of South Carolina. I think I can say that very sincerely. They're fantastic people. And we have about a 44-point lead now. And we have a senator and we have a governor. And uh, we still have that kind of a lead, right? It's nobody even close. And I think we're going to do very well. We're just looking at this store, and this store is amazing. It was built from scratch. It started in the garage about, what, 20 years ago, probably. Oh, and uh, look at 12. And, uh, 12 years. That's incredible. Boy, you work quickly. <laughs> we didn't sleep a lot. You work quickly. <laughs> no sleep. That's right. But you enjoyed it. A uh, great job you've done. Great job. And, Congressman, I just want to thank, where's Joe? Where's Joe? I want to thank you for the job you've done. Honor. One of the big moments in the history of Congress. One night a long time ago. I remember that. We appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. This is the CSA Jackal. We designed this from the ground up, and we make every single part ourselves. So you must have loved guns from the time you were, like, three years old, right? I did. I joined the Army at 17, and I told the recruiter, I just want to shoot guns. But we make... But go ahead. Pretty much... Every, every single part here in South Carolina, Florida, um, we have, we make the barrel. It's just, everything is made from raw materials. And we have three miles away from here, sir. No a lot of it is made just down so the So everything in the and, U.S. And 100% and, yeah, U.S. made. And the cool thing is, South Carolina, it was developed in South Carolina. Right. So this was an idea that we had about seven, eight years ago. It's called the Jackal. It's one of the best-selling guns in the country right now. Um, we also have, this is called the Dagger. This is our handgun. We have a lot of unique designs. How do they compare with the one, the Glock that we just looked at? Well, it's hard to compare with a Glock, but I personally like it. And it's it. The Jackalos are number one. The Daggers are number two sellers. Oh, wow. they, they sell extremely well. What's and the again, difference in price between that and a Glock? A Glock is five fifty to six hundred. These are from three hundred to four hundred, depending on. All the right, that's a difference. So, and Glock gets to charge a premium just yeah. because of the name. Yeah. And everything. Is it me or is Donald Trump look very formidable? Look how big he looks compared to this other guy. But he still has that sincerity in his voice. Appreciate it. Congratulations. See this man right over here? Most important man in photography. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Even though he works for the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's great. Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. Thanks for all you've done. Joe, you I'll tell you a real quick story. Go ahead. So my wife, you met when I... Yes. I, we started this when I got back from my second deployment. And I quit my regular job and I told Deborah, you know, hey, we're going to start a company. But that whole year after I got back, we sent, spent Sunday evenings watching The Apprentice. Oh. And I love The Apprentice. That was my absolute favorite show. That's beautiful. That, that's very nice. It was a big hit. It was a huge hit. That was a oh, big we, hit. We, we liked it. The question is, would I have become president without it? A lot of people, you know, they debate that question. Would he have become president without it? And I don't know. I think, I think the answer is yes, but a lot of people disagree. Uh, can, sir, can I tell the American people that if you're lucky, you'll take care of the pistol brace issue quickly. Take care of all it, issues. It, it's a burden on... We will take care of that. We'll take care of all issues. We'll take care of the border issue. We'll take care of the energy independence. We were energy independent just a short time ago. Think of it. Three years ago, we had so much energy, we were soon going to be energy dominant. Now we're going to Venezuela and begging them for energy. And, and they I sell can. us their tar. You know, there's tar that they sell us. And we refine it in Houston. So if people believe in the uh, atmosphere, they got a big problem. It's, a, it's so horrible what's happening. No, we'll take care of a lot of problems. Right. That problem's easy. Can, can Julian and I get a picture with yeah, you? Yeah, come on over. That's something. And the attorney general. No, no, let the attorney general. Let them. 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 So Trump turned what could have been a difficult situation to his advantage. When the store owner asked him about this pistol brace regulation that he wanted looked at and he wanted amended, um, Trump gives a direct answer and answers the guy's question and says, we will look into that, we'll, we'll solve that problem, and uh, compared to the other problems that we're facing, that one's easy. 
So he assured him that his issue would be looked at and, and he would take it seriously. But then Trump uses this as a trampoline to, to go into uh, other issues that he thinks are adjacent and just as important. And he, and he turns it into a, a whole monologue that makes him look strong and aware of, uh, of other issues as well. And I think that Trump's ability to think on his feet, you know, was this perfect? I don't know. I mean, I, th I think he did a good job. He turned maybe something he didn't, he didn't quite have a ready answer for. This definitely wasn't scripted. He's not looking at a teleprompter. And, he's, and he addressed the guy directly, but then also used it as a platform to talk about what he wanted to talk about. And Trump's ability to think on his feet is second to none. You know, and, and that's why I said, think about Joe Biden doing this. If Biden was in this situation, and we've seen, we've seen him in similar situations where people are confronting him with questions that are maybe a little bit adversarial or um, aggressive or, or just, um, they're difficult questions. And they're, they're not scripted in these live scenarios where, where Biden was asked about um, his son Hunter's business dealings by that older uh, gentleman. And then he, Biden freaked out and called him fat and challenged him to a push-up contest. Confronted um, Biden about another topic. What was that old quote that said something about, if you want to see somebody's soul, look directly into their eyes. And now look at Joe Biden's eyes. And compare that to what we just saw from Donald Trump. Donald Trump was talking to that man like he was an old buddy. He's like, don't worry, we're going to take care of you. We got you. It's all good. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, if somebody asks that guy a question, he's going to take it as a threat. Instead of actually thinking about the question, how can I answer this in a way that appeals to my values, but also makes this person feel heard? No, Donald, Joe Biden doesn't do that. Are you kidding me? Joe Biden's like, no, don't you dare threaten me. I know best. I am your master. That's 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 the vibe I get from that guy. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, he makes you feel heard. He makes you feel listened to. He makes you believe that he's gonna actually listen to you and he might even change his mind. Joe Biden, it just seems like he is so dead set and he will not listen to anything else. What was it Abraham Lincoln? He filled his presidential cabinet with people who disagreed with him vehemently so that he could hear different sides and then make up his own minds. Joe Biden doesn't do that. Donald Trump does. That's the difference. One person has leadership qualities while the other has the mindset of a child. And you don't want that person having power. He goes after his political opponents. He goes after anybody in his way. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down below. How do you think Donald Trump handled it? Do you think Joe Biden would have even entertained this man's question or he would have just walked away? Let me know. I'd love to hear that. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like, comment, subscribe. Wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time. Thank <laughs> you.